Um, many of the questions you get about evolution are about the Hardy-Weinberg formula. So where is that? Look down where it says Hardy-Weinberg equations. See those? P plus Q equals 1. P squared plus 2PQ plus Q squared equals 1. Do you guys know enough about math that you, you know, like, if you squared this, you'd get this? It was turbo. What's that? The, the quote was from turbo. Oh, turbo? it's an L movie. Oh, oh. oh Do y'all know that if you square this, you get this? Mm -hmm. what, what math is that? Mm -hmm. Algebra? Mm -hmm. Fantastic. So, what we need to do is we need to understand, um, how to use these formulas, how it applies to evolution. Now, these formulas work with allele frequencies and genotype frequencies. This formula is for allele frequencies. And this formula is for genotype frequencies. And so um, you need to know the difference between those two those two sets of words there. What does allele frequencies mean? What does genotype frequencies mean? Um, we have, this class we could consider, what if we were the last people on earth? Wouldn't that be awful? Mm -hmm. um, if we're the last people on earth, then this is the entire gene pool of the human population. Alright? We're all here in the same gene pool. Are you with me over there, Meryl? And you can consider a certain trait. Let's say, let's consider um, hitchhiker thumb. Okay? If you have your, if your thumb can bend back like mine can, or at least 45 degrees, then you have what's called hitchhiker thumb. And that's actually controlled by just one pair of genes. If you are big H, big H, or big H, little h, that's hitchhiker song. How many raise your hand if you think you have hitchhiker song? I can't tell. That's pretty straight. You see here? Yeah, that's pretty straight. Awesome. Mine's very big. Yeah, you've got hitchhiker. You got straight. Cool. I'm straight. Is that straight? Pretty close. Hard to say. No, it's hard to say. If you're little h, little h, you got straight. Straight thumb. So, um, Lottie, hold your straight thumb up where we can see it. Hold it where the camera can see it. There we go. It is straight thumb. Okay? So, if we take our entire gene pool, how many of us, raise your hand if you think you have straight thumb? It's okay if you're wrong. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, six of us are this. I'm going to just draw them all out here. One, two, three, four, five, six. There's the straight thumb, folks. Now, how many of the rest of us have bent thumb? Raise them up. One, two, three, four, five. There's five of us with the bent thumb. So let's pretend two of us are big H, big H, and three of us are big H, little H. So, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. That's eleven. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. But there's thirteen in the room, so who didn't answer? didn't say whether they have straight thumb or bent thumb. What 
is wrong with y'all. Okay, we'll say those people that didn't answer. One, one, they were both hitchhikers. Okay. So, um, here are all the folks in the classroom, and that's our gene pool. Now. We can manually figure out the allele frequencies and genotype frequencies. So the allele frequencies are the frequencies of the letter of the of the dominant allele and the recessive allele. Big H is the dominant allele, and little h is the recessive allele. So how can we figure this up in our small population? If we didn't know all the geno all the genes here, we could just count them. What's the frequency of big H and what's the frequency of little h? Well, we could just count them. There's how many big H's? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. There's 10 big H alleles in our gene pool. Nice. How many little h alleles are there? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. There's 16 little h alleles. Okay? David, are you with me up here? There's 10 big H and 16 little H. So, how can we find the frequency? The frequency is um, the uh, percentage of the gene pool that it makes up. So how many total genes, if there's 10 of this and 16 of this, how many total genes are there? 26. There's how many? 26. 26. So 10 out of 26 are big H, and 16 out of 26 are little H. You're going to need your calculators for this. You might as well get a calculator out right now. Or you can use your computer as a calculator if you know how to do that. Maybe there's a little app on the computer. Right. Somebody figure out what 10 divided by 26 is for me. Somebody figure out what 16 divided by 26 is for me. Ten divided by 26 is... Oh, do you want a decimal or a fraction? Yeah, it's a decimal. Let's say 0.39 and then 0 0.6, 0 0.61. 0.61. Did anyone else get that? Can y'all try the math on your own to make sure you know how to divide and add? Now check this out. When Andrew told me that this fraction was 0 0.39, I could do this one in my head. I knew this was 0.61. How am I so good at math all of a sudden? They can consist math Because it's got to add up to 1, right? That's where this formula comes in. P plus Q equals 1. P represents the frequency of the dominant allele. That's what the letter P represents. P represents the allele frequency of the dominant allele. And Q represents the allele frequency of the recessive allele. And it always has to add up to 1. Because a certain percentage are P and the rest of them are Q. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So in our classroom, about 61% of the genes are recessive. Isn't that interesting? Mm -hmm. Now we know something about our classroom. Now, let's say we were the last people on Earth, and we reproduced amongst one another for 10 generations. And then you went back and measured and counted everybody's thumbs in you. Do you think our allele frequencies would stay the same over time? No. Yes. <coughs> you think that when we counted everyone up in 1,000 years, we still have 39% dominant alleles and 61% recessive alleles? We may not. If those numbers change, that means evolution has occurred. The population has changed. If the numbers stay the same, that means no evolution has occurred. The allele frequencies give us a way of measuring evolution. Isn't that cool? Yep. <clears throat> you can measure evolution if you can count allele frequencies. 
So normally we don't know all of the alleles in our population. Like we we can count the number of recessive individuals, but but there I had no way of knowing how many were big H little H and how many were big H big H of if if you have the the hitchhiker's thumb, I, I can't really know if you're big H big H or big H little H, right? Mm -hmm. But these guys, these mathematicians came around and they said, well, we can kind of guess on what the percentages will be. And their names were Hardy and Weinberg. And they came up with this, the Hardy-Weinberg equations. And the Hardy-Weinberg equations are these. P plus Q equals one. That's your allele frequencies equation. That's why how you figure out these numbers. And P squared plus 2PQ plus Q squared equals one. That's your genotype frequencies. So let's see what that means. What, why do we have this second equation? Well, again, P is the frequency of the dominant allele. Q is the frequency of the recessive allele. I think you got to be watching me here, David, or you're not going to get this. P is the frequency of the dominant allele. Q is the frequency of the recessive allele. P squared is the chance of getting two dominant alleles. Big H, big H. 2PQ is the chances of getting a big H and a little h. And Q squared is the chances of getting two little h's. And you use these equations for determining an estimate of what you'll have in a large population. So for instance, if it was true that our Q was 0.61 and our P was 0.39, in other words, there's about a 40% chance. Let's round off. You want to round off to make the math simpler? Do you like making math simpler? Yeah. Let's round that off to 0.4 and 0.6. Now we can do some of these without a calculator. Josie, are you with me? Good stuff, isn't it? Do you like math? Not really. If there's a 40% chance, if, if let's say a child is born into our gene pool, what's the chance that they will get a big H? If you just draw one gene out of the out of the gene pool, what's the chance that it will be a big H? 40%. What's the chances if you draw two genes out of our gene pool? They, they'll both be big H. 0.4 times 0.4. There's a 16% chance of having a kid in our population that's big H, big H. If our genes, if 40% of the genes in our gene pool are big H, 60% of the genes in our gene pool are little H, there's only a 16% chance of getting two big H's if you belong to that population. It's like shooting free throws. If I'm a 50% free throw shooter, if I make half my free throws, and I'm not, I'm a 90% free throw shooter, but anyway, if I was a 50% free, free throw shooter, what are the odds of me making two free throws in a row? Well, it's 50% for the first one, it's only 50% for the second one. So the odds of making both is 0.5 squared. 0.25. I only have a 25% chance of making both free throws. You've got to understand a little bit about probabilities when you're thinking about these equations. What if some guy comes up to you real quick, there's a 70% free throw shooter at the line. And he's, a, he's out of the line, he's about to shoot. And, he, and some guy comes up and goes, I bet you he makes both. Do you take that bet or don't you? A hundred dollars, he makes both free throws. He's a 70% free throw shooter. Do you take the bet? Yes. What's the odds of making both if you're a 70% free throw shooter? Only 49%. You should take that bet. You got a better than 50% chance of winning. And you only have a second to decide. That's that's why you got to be, be be able to do some quick math. Steph Curry shoots 90% for free throws. What's the odds of him making both? 
81 percent. What's the odds of him making three in a row if he got fouled on a three-point shot? What's the odds of making all three free throws for Steph Curry? So it's 0.9 cubed. What's 0.9 cubed? 0.9 times 0.9 times 0.9. Somebody do that for me. I think he's 72.9. Yeah, he still has a 70, 72 percent chance of making all three. That's how good he is. Isn't that amazing? Almost as good as you, Mr. Wallace. Yeah, wow. we're both 90 percent. Okay, so enough about my free throw shooting skills. What are the odds of getting two little H's in this population? 36%. And what are the odds of getting one big H and one little H? There's two ways to do it. That's why the two is here. You could, draw, you could get a big H gene first and a little H gene second. Or you could get a little H gene first and a big H gene second. That's why the two here. 2 times P times Q. 2 times 0.4 times 0.6. Do you know what 2 times 0.4 times 0.6 is? 0.48. Is that you, Cartier? No. Cartier. You can do some math. So there's 16% of our, if our gene, our allele frequencies are 0.4 and 0.6, then 16% of the people in our population, this is if you can't count everybody. Often you're not able to count everybody in the population. But if you know that these are the allele frequencies, they'll often tell you, they'll give it to you in the, in the problem. By the way, i got a whole problem sheet coming on this. It's going to count as a quiz grade. If you did poorly on this last one, you could make 100 on it. Raise your grade up. Anyway, if a sample population was 40% dominant, 60% recessive, then probably we'll have about 36% of the population little h, little h, 48% of the population big h, little h, and 16% of the population big h, big h. You like it? Mm -hmm. All right. Well, let's try one. You ready? Mendel's pea plants. He looked around his garden and he noticed that <coughs> he figured out that 30% of the pea plants genes were recessive. Can you figure out the percentages? So this is little t, this is big t, this is big t, big t, this is big t, little t, this is little t, little t. Can you figure out the other percentages? Mm -hmm. Do it now. You don't need a paper. I'll come around and see. Don't write on the paper that I gave you. I want you to find P, P squared, 2 P, Q, and Q squared. Yeah, I know.
Done yet? No. No, not yet. Nothing? No, no, I This is right. Is it? Yeah. Okay. That's right. That's right. That's wrong. Okay. <laughs> what you got, Lottie? It's part, I think, so far. I can't read that small. I think that looks right. Yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, got them all. Just <laughs> all right, let me tell y'all. You're not done yet? We gotta go faster than this. So, what is P? P is 0.7. That's the first thing you figure out, because that adds up to one. You gotta get that first. What is big T, big T? 0.7 times 0.7, 0.7 squared, 0.49. What is big T, little t? 2 times 0.7 times 0.3. You can use a calculator. I can do it in my head. That's 0.42. Here's the hard one. What's 0.3 times 0.3? 0.09. A lot of people put 0.9. But it can't be 0.9 because it all has to add up to 1. And 0.49 plus 0.42 plus 0.9 would be way over 1. Plus 0.09 would be 1. 0 0.3 times 0.3 is 0.09. What's 0.1 times 0.1? 0.01. 0.01. Yes. Okay. Never mind. Never mind. Let's try, it, let's try another one real quick. You ready? Yeah. Then we'll get a little bit tougher. 0 0.8, 0 0.2. Oh, God, I gave it. 0.8, <laughs> quick. Get the other three. Get the other three. You got to be able to do this. And by the time I stop saying this sentence, you pretty much should be done with this particular question on the Hardy-Weinberg equations introduced in the 1800s by Hardy and Weinberg. Should be done. done. What's P? Point two. Point two. What's Q squared? Point six four. Point six four. Eight times eight is sixty four. Didn't y'all learn that? Mm -hmm. Point eight times point eight is point six four. What is p squared? Point oh. Point oh four. Ah, now we got it. And what's two times point two times point two times point eight? Point three two. Thirty two. Point thirty two. And do sixty four and thirty two and four add up to a hundred? Probably does. So that would equal one. All right, now here's how they'll do it. They don't make it this easy on the AP test. What they'll probably say is something like this. Check this out. You ready? No. They'll say 36% of a particular population has straight thumb. What percent of the population is homozygous dominant. 36% of a population has straight thumb. That means 0.36 is this. What percentage is homozygous dominant? How could you do this? They're not giving us any allele frequencies. So how can we figure out P squared if we don't know P? Man. So you do the square root of 0.36 times 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 0.
squared equals 0.36. If q squared equals 0.36, what is q? q must be 0.6, because 0.6 times 0.6 is 0.36. And if q is 0.6, then p is what? 0.4, then p squared is what? 0.16. Mad. Fantastic. Y'all see how I did that? No? You want to see it again, Jesse? Jesse. Meryl? I'm thinking of your sisters. There's so many beans. All right, let's try another, let's try another one. You ready? Tell Jesse how to stand it up. Um, okay, here we go. Um, what if what if they said one percent of your population, one uh, percent of Mendel's peas were short? That's recessive. So what we're saying is little t little t equals 0 0.01. And they and they they may they might ask say what is the uh, what is the number of heterozygotes? What is the percentage of the population that's heterozygous? You're fast. But how do you do that? we got to figure out how, how to do that. Meryl, this is for you. So I already told you Q squared equals 0.01. Could you solve for Q? Remember in math? Remember how math? You take the square root of both sides. What's the square root of q squared? Are you allowed to take the square root of both sides in math? Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What's the square root of q squared, anyone? No, what's the square root of q squared? I'm asking you. Q. What's the square root of 0.01? You can do it on your calculator. 0 0.1. 0 0.1 times 0.1 equals 0.01. Now we know Q equals 0.1. Now we can figure out P equals 0.9. And now we can figure out 2PQ is 0.18. And that's what Andrew said. Thank you. Go, Andrew. Isn't this interesting? Yep, Bruce. Y'all ready for one where I'm not going to do it for you? Sure. Okay. How many can roll their tongue? Oh. You can? If you can roll your tongue, you're dominant. If you're a non-roller, are you a non-roller? Mm -hmm. Wait, you said you could roll it or you can't? I can't roll it. Then you're a non-roller. Yeah. If you're a non-roller, you're recessive. A study on people showed that 25% of folks couldn't roll their tongue. Can you figure out the allele frequencies of the population and the percentages that are homozygous dominant and heterozygous? Yes. I'll give you five units of time to figure that out. Five units of time. Wait, what are we finding? Uh, find out what P squared is, what 2PQ is, what Q is, and oh, what P okay. is. If I tell you that 25% of people, or 25% of the population, um, can't roll the tongue, it's a recessive trait. So what percent... Does Big T, Big T can roll their tongue, and Big T, Little T, what is that? Yeah. And what is the allele frequency of each gene? Coming around to see. Got anything? 